Hello, in this video we're going to drive the indirect profit function and then do some applications of Hotelling's lemma. So we're going to consider a competitive, a perfectly competitive price-taking firm. The indirect profit function is the following. The firm's profit is a function of exogenous variables, the variables determined outside the firm's control. These things in this case would be the price of the product. The price of the product is going to be determined by the market demand and market supply. And that price then will just be given to the firm. The firm is a price taker. And likewise, the price of the inputs will be determined in the market for labor and the market for capital. Sometimes this indirect profit function is called a maximum value function, or it is often called a maximum value function. So here we have a firm's production function. Okay, you're going to look at this in the short run here where capital is fixed. So output, the quantity of output equals 2 times the square root of labor. So L is just units of labor. P is going to be the price of the product. W will be the wage. And profit will be revenue minus cost. Again, we're ignoring fixed cost here. And making a substitution in for Q. What is Q? 2 times the square root of labor. So we have that right here. And I am going to take the derivative of the profit function with respect to the firm's choice variable. The firm only has a choice of setting L. The P and W are given to the firm. So taking the partial derivative of the profit function with respect to L labor, we're going to get this result right here. We're interested in maximizing profit, so we're going to set this first derivative equal to zero. We're going to solve this then. We're going to solve this uh, first derivative here for L. So just moving some things around. Dividing through by W. And then squaring both sides. This happens to be the firm's labor demand. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this L and I am going to plug it into our profit function. So where I have L down here, I'm going to plug in this result. So making that substitution, we get this. There's also an L over here by the wage. So for that, I put in again P squared divided by W squared. And we're going to just simplify this. So just one thing to note, the choice variable L has been assigned its optimal value. So this is sometimes why it's called the maximum value function. So we found the L, what its optimal value should be, P squared divided by W squared. We plug that into our profit function. We have our now our indirect profit function that we're going to simplify. So this will simplify down to the following. We got a P and a P here, so we get a P squared, and this W divided by W squared just leaves W in the denominator. And so we have our indirect profit function, which is just a function of the exogenous variables, the variables that are outside the firm's control. Now let's do a few things with this indirect profit function. So our, once again, our indirect profit function. If we were to take the partial derivative of this indirect profit function with respect to the wage, we get back the following result, minus p squared divided by w squared. Hotelling's lemma tells us that labor demand will equal minus this partial derivative. So in other words, this is one way to get back the labor demand. You take the partial derivative of the indirect profit function with respect to the wage. This also happens to be an application of the envelope theorem. So another application, so once again our indirect profit function. Let's now take the partial derivative of the indirect profit function with respect to price. You'll get this result right here. So Hotelling's lemma tells us that this partial derivative of the indirect profit function with respect to price will be the supply equation for the firm. So the firm's supply equation, Q, equals 2 times the price divided by the wage. 
let me show you that this indeed is this is indeed correct. So let's let's drive the firm supply equation here. Um, in the short run, where capital is fixed, it can be shown that marginal cost equals a wage divided by the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor is just the derivative of this short run production function with respect to L. We get this result. So plugging that into marginal cost, we have this result right here. In perfect competition, price equals marginal cost. So replacing MC with P. Going to move some things around here. And one thing to note here that L to the 1 half, look at this production function over here, L to the 1 half, if we were to solve it for L to the 1 half, you'd get Q divided by 2. So let's make a substitution. I can L to the 1 half just equals Q divided by 2. So I did that on the left-hand side. Solve for Q. That is the firm's supply equation, supply function. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.